So at first glance, this looks a little bit like a miniature camera, right? Even has a standard one quarter twenty tripod mount on the back here. But it's not a camera, it's a microphone, uh, quite a special microphone. It's the UAM80 wideband ultrasonic sensor recently developed by Martin Lauren. The U stands for ultrasonic and the 80 means that it's capable of measuring up to 80 kilohertz. The A means amplified. To be amplified means that it's powered and it's charged through this USB-C port. But there's no battery in here, lithium or otherwise. We're charging a supercapacitor. And a two minute charge gives us an hour and a half of playtime. Now this thing works in conjunction with an oscilloscope, uh, pretty much any brand of oscilloscope. And it can be connected through a BNC cable like this. Or my favorite method through a BNC coupler like this especially when it's on the HS512 Max. Really nice and compact method here. Now the primary use for the UAM80 is for ultrasonic parking sensors to be able to diagnose them. So I'm simulating a 40 kilohertz parking sensor. That was the frequency of the first generation of these sensors. So first, I'm going to be using this passive non-powered, narrow-band ultrasonic sensor. Like Martin sells these on this store and similar things are available on the internet. They're not all that pricey, but they're very limited in bandwidth. Okay, They're very targeted at that 40 kilohertz range. So let's see it perform here. Okay, so we're picking up that 40 kilohertz sensor. Cool. Let's uh, bring the band up a little bit. 41 kilohertz. Already we see the amplitude is down a bit. 42 kilohertz. Down considerably. And here we are at 43 kilohertz, barely getting a signal. So parking sensors have really evolved over the years. They started out at that 40 kilohertz frequency but then there were subsequent generations that went to 48 kilohertz, 58 kilohertz, and 68 kilohertz. This thing falls flat on its face, 3 kilohertz above its target 40 kilohertz range. And that's a problem with these kind of sensors and the DIY ones that people are making with old parking sensors for uh, diagnostics. Uh, they are so targeted at that narrow 40 kilohertz range and they cannot do the other generations of parking sensors. So now I've got the UAM80 mounted on a tripod, all right, pointed at the very same parking sensor, okay, and I'm using the frequency domain to demonstrate this, the all-powerful FFT mode, okay. So the parking sensor is emitting a 40 kilohertz signal. I'm going to bump it up to 50, to 60, to 70, to 80, to 90, to 100. See how wide band that UAM80 is. It'll have no trouble with all generations of ultrasonic parking sensors. So enough with the fun and games. Let's take this thing out in the real world on real parking sensors. Okay, start it. Meat truck, 2023 Ford Raptor. So, here, signal. Here's a signal. Here's a signal. I might be out of camera range. A signal. We'll do another way here. We'll go into the automotive module. I'm gonna record. I'm gonna start.
and I'm gonna do one stop I'm gonna save it clear record start let's do another one Stop. Save. Clear. Record. Start. Do a third one. Stop. Save. Clear. Record. Start. Do the fourth one. Stop. And save. We'll be able to review these uh, later on. Good shot. So here are the four waveforms that we just captured. I'll open one up. So these parking sensors, right, they just go in bursts, like 200 milliseconds apart. Like here's some more bursts, more bursts, okay, five per second, okay. And if we zoom in on one, okay, that's what they look like. Now, I did these captures, which are a little bit more time consuming, right? One at a time, record, save, and so on. Uh, normally, that's not something that we do. I did that to show you what these things look like. Normally, we just go quick and dirty in scope mode, all right? And uh, we're just looking for seeing this, right? It'll pop up on the screen if there is a single. Then we just quickly move on to the next sensor and repeat, okay? as I'm going to do on this 2015 Ford Escape. Okay, start the car. Reverse. So we're de detecting a single on this one, right? And here. And here. But nothing here. And there's a code on this vehicle for parking sensor issues. And we found out which one. Okay. So I'm sure you guys notice all this rust happening on this vehicle, right? That's what six month long salty winters will do. And this vehicle has suffered through 10 of them. And the underneath here would be worse. And I think it's safe to assume that the parking sensor issue on this one number four here um, is probably related to that rust. So both the owner of the vehicle and I are pretty busy at this time with spring yard work. But once we catch up, um, I'll go help him out and we're going to do some Swaptronics, right? Having the UAA M80 is going to help us out a lot with that. Okay, so uh, switching gears here for a little bit, all right? And uh, while we're keeping in mind that the primary use for the UAA M80 is for ultrasonic parking sensors, like all generations of them, okay? But there are other uses, okay? So I'm going to toy around with two. I'm going to start with leak detection uh, around door seals, window seals, that type of thing. So I'm going to use a small Bluetooth speaker, right? And not included with the purchase of the UAM80, like I've had this thing for a while. And we're going to broadcast a 15 kilohertz tone through this. Okay? And this will be inside the vehicle and the doors will be closed. And then we're going to be scanning with the UAM80 to see if we can detect 
the leakage of that 15 kilohertz tone through a door seal. Now this is a brand new car, like less than a year old. So we would not expect to see any leakage around this door seals, at least I would hope not, right? To simulate one, I will close the door. It's not fully latched, but watch me press here in this corner and I can feel that I'm squeezing the weather stripping, okay? So whatever little gap there is, it's not a big one, okay? So let's proceed with the test. Okay, so I got the Bluetooth speaker in the car. Here's a new module that Martin just put into H-Scope called Leak Detector. You can choose between 10,000 hertz and 20,000 hertz. So I selected 15,000 hertz, okay? 15 kilohertz. And you can see with the door open that we're measuring a spike at 15 kilohertz emitted by the Bluetooth speaker in the car. Close the door. Can't see it on this door. Now, of course, we can see it pretty good because there's a big gap here. Okay. Take it away. Bring it to the gap. Take it away. And I'm, I'm kind of crushing that weather strip. Take it away and we can still see it. So it might help find the source of a wind noise complaint or perhaps the source of a water intrusion without getting a garden hose out to try and find a leak. Okay. So it's, it's kind of new technology. Uh, Martin and I are not the first ones to feature this. There are other people toying with that. Okay. Uh, but here it is. And another type of leak detection, okay? So it's not where you're generating a tone or anything like that. It would be like the ultrasonic uh, hissing, almost like this uh, wind that's going on right now. We're getting another winter storm and we're at the end of April. It's crazy. All right, so it, you don't might have a pressure vessel of any type. It might be air, it might be gas. You've got pipe and fittings and joints and you're trying to detect if there's a leak and there's a small hiss. So we wouldn't be able to hear it, right? But uh, a very wide band, very sensitive microphone like this might. Okay? So this is a pressure vessel, a tire, okay? And with um, a little bit of care, right? And by listening, you know, or maybe by the tire valve, if there is a leak, it might be possible to hear it with this. Again, you know, brand new car, brand new tire, no issues here. I will uh, do a small simulation. Let's have some fun. Gonna have to hang out to that sucker now, it's full of hot air. I know you were thinking it. Okay, so there's a small pinhole in this balloon. Okay. I can't feel it, I can't hear it. Okay. Very, very, very small. So let's see if UAM 80 can hear it. So, unlike the previous demonstration where we were focused on 15 kilohertz and we're using the frequency domain and we're just getting that. It wouldn't matter if there was any other noise in the shop. But for this, you need quiet. It's got to be sterile or else you can't do it at all. Okay, this is very fussy. So I'm going to keep my yap shut.
You see that? Now, there's only maybe a one PSI or whatever in here, okay? It's very, very small compared to a tire with 30 some odd PSI. So, um, any kind of uh, meaningful air here would be heard by this. You just need a little bit of patience and wand around and I'm sure that you would detect it. It's one of the uses for a microphone with this kind of a bandwidth. UAM80 retails for $99 on the Scope store. I'll leave a link. Okay? There are other devices on the market that have similar capabilities. Uh, they're not common and they would be multiples of that price. Uh, this would be a good time for me to reiterate that uh, although I feature Martin's work and I often you know, collaborate on some of this stuff, that I have no financial interest in any of it. Okay, so full disclosure. Now, while quantities last on that first production run, because there are the slightest cosmetic flaws, and you guys got a real close-up look of this thing, on the beginning of the video, and this is a first production run UAM80, okay? So it's no big deal. The price is reduced for 79 bucks while they last. The next production run will address those issues and the full retail price will apply. Thank you for watching. Take care, guys.